to our other lion partner, which is Nyasa Lion Project in Mozambique. Uh, this is an incredible project doing so much more than just lions, led by the indomitable Colleen Begg and Agostino George, who's here, and we're excited to have you here with us, Agostino. So for Nyasa Lion Project, here's Colleen. <laughs> It's wonderful to be face to face <laughs> so that we can see eye to eye. The only way in which we can have a conversation and build a community for conservation is if we get together and do it together. It has been a really hard three years. I know it's been very difficult for all of you with so many people that you've lost, so many livelihoods lost, and then in November, we had the insurgency in the eastern part of northern Mozambique come into Nyasa Reserve, where we work, and we had to evacuate all our staff, and seven villages were attacked. Um, it was very hard for everybody, and also made us feel how vulnerable um, the whole system is. We are very happy to say that we are all back at work, but what I wanted to say to you today is that there are moments in life when everyone has to become a warrior of some kind. If you are a poet, you fight with words. And if you are an artist, you fight with paints. But you can't say, sorry, I'm a poet, I pass. And so my message to you is, you cannot abdicate responsibility for what's happening to wildlife across the world today to a few conservationists in far-fung places and believe that they will be able to save it for you. I hope that you're not sitting too comfortably in your seats today because you are part of this story that we are going to be able to work together to be able to save biodiversity across the planet. Because this really is about coexistence. We really don't want to be the only species left on Earth. And coexistence is as much about you and where you live here in California as it is about the communities that we're going to tell you about who live in the place where we live. Because we all have to coexist. And if we look at the map of where the lion range is at the moment, these small pockets of lions across Africa that the Lion Recovery Fund of WCN are trying so hard to save, it is going to be an act of radical imagination to be able to save them. I don't know if there are any 25-year-olds in the audience or if you have a 25-year-old son or daughter, but when they were born, there were 50,000 lions in Africa. Today, there are 25,000 lions, more or less, in Africa. I'm 53. How many lions will there be when that person is the same age as I am. And I know that you care about many species, as do I, but this is the story of all the conservationists. So we are the Nyasa Lion Project. We actually work on all the large carnivores, African wild dogs, leopards, lions, and hyenas. And our mission is to secure these large carnival populations and make sure that coexistence continues with the full respect of the people who live in Nyasa Reserve and to respect the environment, the culture, and the people who live there. I work in a place that many of you have already heard about in northern Mozambique, which is midway between the coast and Pemba and Lake Malawi. It's on the border with Tanzania. That small little yellow spot there is where our Maruri Environmental Center is based and where we live. Nyasa is spectacular. I always show this picture after 20 years of our project being in existence. I was in, um, is as inspired and in awe of this place as I ever was. It is 16,000 square miles, 42,000 square kilometers, bigger than Switzerland. It is a remarkable opportunity to really show what coexistence looks like. In most protected areas across Africa and the world, people have been removed from the protected area. 
People have never left Nyasa, even though it is a special reserve. They are the opportunity for the future of the place. They are, uh, you can either see them as a problem or you can see them as an opportunity. This is at a sacred site in Nyasa where the yellow baboons are believed to be the ancestors. These people, these people from Nyasa are the hope for us being able to say lions and everything in the protected area. The other day, I was going back home and I came across this little band of kids, six of them with a little, a little pocket of, um, all of them are carrying fish. They'd been chingombo fishing, which is, means that they, w they swim in the water of the river, the Legenda River, with crocodiles, and they chase fish into small nets. What was extraordinary about them, other than their joy, was that they were 14 kilometers from home, and it was still a long way to walk. But for them, Nyasa is home. And we have to get past this idea that home is only where your house is. For people who live in these wilderness areas, it's all home. Every bush, every tree, every baobab, every mountain is home. And they are perfectly at home, walking 14 kilometers through the bush, barefoot, carrying their fish home for the evening dinner. Our organization believes that the journey is as important as the destination. We are values-based and outcome, um, values-driven, outcomes-based organization. This means that our values are very, very important to us and we're developed together with our whole team. First and foremost is respect. Respect for each other, respect for the environment, respect for culture. The second is shova shova, which means I give, you give. It's a local word which really kind of means collaboration, but a little bit more than that. Communication. Most of the conflict we have is when we don't communicate. Inclusion. Everybody's voice matters. Opportunities to learn. Everybody needs to grow. It doesn't matter where you are in the organization. We need to provide opportunities so that everybody has room to mo move up. I need to use my privilege and my influence to open the doors for others and teamwork. <laughs> so many times in this audience, people have asked me, but what about the women? Where are the women? Well, it's taken us a long time, but we are slowly but surely getting to gender equity in our organization. And the women bring a very important part of our organization, just like it was alliance, but it's not just about the women. It's about having young and old, and mechanics and PhDs. It has, we have four different languages we're translating. It's about those who have lived experience and those who have learned experience about, the, about Nyasa Reserve. It is about all those voices coming together for a future. When I think about our journey over the last 20 years, it's very hard for me to visualize it. It's hard to visualize it with lions, but you can visualize it with people. This is 2008, when Agostino first joined us. You can see for our children, who are now 13 and 15, how much time has passed. This is our team now. We have 106 permanent employers. We're all African. Everybody's Mozambican except for Keith and I. And 85% come from the villages inside Nyasa Reserve. The bottom line is our management team, and they are incredible. And in May 2028, Keith and I will be stepping out and handing it over. And that has always been our intention. I can also see how we have changed over the years by some of our team. This is Francesco. I met him as a tiny boy who was fishing, chungumbo fishing, in front of my camp. He's got the fish in his mouth because if he puts it on a rock, a yellow-billed kite will come and catch it. <laughs> Francesco is now a mechanic who works for us. And just this year, through an amazing government initiative, we were able to certify some of our non-literate staff for the skills that they have, which is very, very important. Saidi is also, I first met him when he was hunting with dogs as a young boy near his village. He's now an electrician and takes care of an input in our entire solar system that was actually donated by someone that's in this audience. We are very proud of our team. Last year, 
We won the Best Conservation Team Award by the African Conservation Awards. It meant a huge amount for us because this single face of conservation, this thing about heroes, that's not what does conservation. It is about teams. And every single person is important to us. The people who feed us every single day, Mama Fatima, is as important as anyone else in the team. So about 10 years ago, we were frustrated in the reserve with the inability to see how communities could be proper partners in conservation. And so we tended for a small concession, see it there, called L5 South. In this concession, in a spectacularly beautiful area of 58,000 hectares, lies a village of 2,000 people, 460 households. Through many, many conversations, sitting under mango trees, we have then developed a partnership, a legal partnership with this community, and we legally manage the L5 South concession together. First of all, we needed to stop the loss. We needed to remove the snares, get rid of the illegal mining. So we have 38 anti-poaching scouts, which work across the area. All are from all our Nyasa residents, and they help us monitor what's going on. We then needed to reduce the cost of living with lions. And so we have a program to, of, to reaffirm cultural values so that people could sleep in sanjas, which are these houses on stilts, and be safe from lion attacks. It was very successful until this last year we had some tax in West in the reserve where the prey has declined. The village of Mbamba asked us to please help them solve the problem of elephants and buffalo coming into the village during the day. It was at night. It was making it um, very dangerous for children, especially during the mango season with the elephants. They decided that we were going to, they were going to put in place an elephant trench. It is one size sloped and one size straight. Over two months, you can see it there, the village dug a four kilometer elephant trench around the entire village. We paid 75%. They paid 25%. We paid anyone with a bamboo rod. We measured the distance. And it has been extraordinarily successful and has solved the problem. A non-tech solution, a local solution that creates employment that has been very successful at protecting this village. We also needed to unlock the value of conservation through our craft programs, through our grass programs. All our buildings are thatch, so is our ecotourism camp, which generates $10,000 for the woman each year. We have livestock breeding programs so that they can get protein, so that they don't have to use bushmeat and can get a small amount of money for emergencies. Honey programs, where we had one person who was able to earn $1,000 last month from the honey he harvested from his hives. And we sponsor the jars and the marketing. The rest goes to the communities. We have an ecotourism camp, which is unfortunately closed at the moment, built entirely by the community, managed by them, and they are employed there. And so when we have our annual AGMs, we are able to report back on our responsibilities. The village, Mbamba, reports back on theirs. And the little graph in the corner shows you the increase in the conservation income over the time that we have been partnering with them um, since 2012 that goes into their community conservation fund. And what are they doing with that money? This year, they're building a maternity unit. And that is what the village decided to do themselves. <laughs> but what's extraordinary about this maternity unit is the plans were drawn by a man from Mbamba it's managed by the chiefs of Mbamba, the people who are building it from Mbamba, all the bricks are made by Mbamba, and every single aspect of it is being done by them with money and income that comes from conservation. And what else can we see as results? We can see that all the game and all the prey have increased. We're seeing lions in the day. We've gone from two prides to seven prides in this tiny little area um, alone. We're starting to see prides that look normal. We're starting to see all the sub-adults and the adults and the cubs. We're seeing hyenas in the day, which we've never seen before, with all the vultures, acting like most of you who've seen to, been to Botswana or other places, you think that's normal, it's taken us a long time. 
while dogs are breeding behind the Murray Environmental Center. We now have packs that are seen regularly. And this picture that Keith took the other day, you have to look at his hind legs. Look how relaxed he is. <laughs> so if you want to see a symbol of success, it's those back legs of that leopard. He is completely relaxed in the day. That's what coexistence looks like. That's when you partner with a community. Remember, there are 2,000 people living in this area inside the special reserve. We have more than 200 children that come to the environmental center from across the districts in Nyasa, and they get to be tourists. I always have a problem with ecotourism, which, which takes the best places for people from outside to see wildlife. So we've made sure that we bring the people who live in Nyasa to come and see the wildlife. But it's not all good news, because we know this works, and we've proven it works. But lions continue to decline across the whole of Nyasa Reserve. And one of our major problems is poisoning and for a teeth and claw trade that is coming from the international market. So that picture that I showed you was in July this year. We have an extraordinary problem on our hands that started in 2015, where lions are being poisoned simply to cut off their paws and take their jaws so that for the trinket trade, which is going to Asia. We can't solve that by having a small concession. It's much bigger than, than that, which is why I said that you all count. It counts, everybody counts. So we have now started a project through for collaboration. Um, we're working with partners across the whole of the reserve to set up intensive protection zones for lions that are about the same size as the small concession we've had such success. This is a recent meeting workshop that we had. The Chanaria came from Owasso to help us. These are all Mozambicans who are learning to do conservation across this huge landscape to put, we are putting money into anti-poaching to help them protect these areas so that we can prevent the lion from con lions from continuing to decline. We have more than 16 lion prides collared at the moment, and these are followed um, in these intensive protection zones to be able to protect them. These will form the source populations in Nyasa so that as the population starts to decline, we have some secure areas that can continue to support them. These lion collars also help us so that we understand how, how lions move around communities. There's the trench, there's the village. The dots are female, a pride, in pride. And so this helps us to understand how lions move amongst people in the Asa Reserve. One of the most important things to unlock the value for people in the Asa is to reward them for their living with wild animals right close to their village. We have a camera trapping program with performance payments where each village has cameras, four cameras that have to be set within one kilometer of the village. Every picture that it takes provides them with points, with some of the more dangerous animals like elephants, lions and leopards providing more points than others. The village then gets to convert that money, that into money and they get to decide how they want to spend it. All the villages, more than $20,000 has been given to villages, four villages, in the initiation of this. All of that money has been used for food, which has been di distributed household by household by the communities themselves. It's entirely their decision. And to circle back to the beginning, two of the villages that have this program were destroyed by insurgents in November. Their houses were completely destroyed, and they are the people that you can see walking down the road with everything that they own on the top of their heads. This program has helped them to recover. It is their resilience, and it is conservation and the wildlife that is providing them with a future. And so what does the future look like, and where are we going? And to take you on that journey, as we end this presentation, I'd like to introduce you to Agostino, who is the Conservation Director of Nyasa Lion Project. Thank you so much, Colleen. Good afternoon, everyone. So, alone I smile, together we laugh. Alone I say, together 
we talk, alone I enjoy, together we celebrate. We would like to keep talking about opportunities to engage communities. We would like to keep talking about opportunities to make conservation relevant. We would like to keep talking about innovative ways to make uh, conservation deliver in these challenging days. In this picture, we have uh, a very important meeting where we are co-creating the future with the, our partner community, Bamba Village. We have Mama Bibi Amisi telling her story, a story where she saved her, her husband that was being attacked by a male lion. It was a sad story, but with a positive <coughs> Uh, result. She was sharing with the village what she learned based on that terrific experience. The most amazing thing was that she could recognize what she did, what they did wrong. She did not put the blame on the animal. On the other end, we have Eusebio, one of the greatest trackers we have probably in Mozambique, lion trackers we have in Mozambique. Eusebio is t talking to the village on how we would like to uh, make sure that more kids can have this experience with lions. He wants to take more kids to see lions in the bush. He wants to take more kids to enjoy, to experience lions in a positive way. These conversations are important. It's important that we engage with these communities. It's important that we co-create the future with them. Equally important is the health, the well-being of our most important partners, the communities. We want, we, we want to continue bring in doctors to look after the health of our people because we believe that the well-being is important. We want them to be healthy and strong for the long journey we have together. We strongly believe in giving back to, the, to conservation is one of our core, core value. Colleen mentioned about Chova Chova, which is a bit more than collaboration. In this picture, we have our colleague, Kiteria, in our exchange experience visit in Guna Rizur. Kiteria and her amazing small team are doing fantastic, fantastic work, helping uh, about six organizations improving the monitoring capacity. So Kiteri is taking all her lear all that we're learning in terms of monitoring and is helping organization, technicians in these organizations to build the capacity in terms of monitoring, how to track lions, how to use the data to inform conservation decision. That's very important because there are things that took us years to learn, but through this kind of collaboration, it's amazing that these technicians can deliver important results, can start producing uh, important reports in less than two months. That's what collaboration is. That's what we should do in conservation. That's the future of conservation. We care about wildlife, and that's the way of uh, scaling without growing. Through this kind of approach, we are able to reach organizations that are as far as 1,000 kilometers away from us. So we are able to save and have impact over thousands of animals that we wouldn't be able to, to do another way. We would like to continue make sure that we meet the basic needs of our partners, which are the communities, because we believe that it's important. We, we cannot expect them to have these important conversations with empty stomach. And we believe that if you look after these communities, we do not, not need to worry about wildlife. 
In this picture, we have a few relaxed islands, a few meters away from the village. <coughs> and we would like to make sure that, like these islands, we can have more, continue having a lots of wildlife, enjoying the peace around the village. That the, vi the community can continue hearing the roaring of the lions in the nights without worrying. We all have power as individuals. We have power as group. We can make sure that we, we are not the last generations enjoying the privilege of celebrating lions. This expo is very important in the sense that we are also co-creating the future. In the same way that we had those important meetings with the village where B Mama Bibi Amis was telling, telling her stories, where Eusebi was also telling how he wants the kids to enjoy lions in the future. This moment is also important for us. This conversation matters. We are putting on the ground really important seeds to make sure that next, ge next generations can celebrate lions. We are getting close to the end. When we finalize the, the, the <coughs> our uh, meetings with communities under the mango trees, we have a, a ritual that we would like to uh, use here, if you don't mind. I would like us to make a hoy for conservation. So I will show how, we, how you do and then I will ask you to repeat. I want, I want all, everyone to stand, please. Okay, just see how I, I will do it. It's just conservation hoye, then you will say damsien hoye. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, one, two, three. Conservation hoye. Damsien hoye. Thank you so much. So thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you, equally important, for all support that you have been giving to us in difficult moments, but also for the old support that you give to other projects, to the It Was Aligned project, but also for the projects like Grave Zebra that are also facing difficult times. So thank you so much. <clears throat> Great. I think we are out of time for questions because we're running a little bit behind. Um, but Colleen and Agostino are here all day and they'll be around. So please find them, find an opportunity to chat with them. We are now going to break for lunch. I'll give you a little bit of the logistics. There is food on this floor and on the first floor, but you're welcome to eat on any floor of the building you want. There's a beautiful roof deck on floor four at the top. You might catch some of Fleet Week up there, might catch a little vitamin D up there, but I highly recommend it. There's also a nice quiet conference room on the third floor if you want to grab somebody like Colleen and have a nice little chat. So enjoy lunch. We'll be back at 2 p.m. Downstairs will be, or sorry, in here will be the landscapes panel with Peter Lindsay from the Lion Recovery Fund, Rosie Mira from Proyecto Titi, and I'm missing one other. And then downstairs will be Global Penguin Society and Marisette. So we'll see those guys at 2 p.m. And we'll see you all back at 2 p.m. <laughs>